we, we're just about out of time, but I got to ask you about these comments from Donald Trump uh, calling for protests, saying he's about to be arrested. Are you, are you concerned about the possibility of violence? Look, uh, violence is never the right answer, and I always worry about it. Look, so what if they arrest Trump, right? Ain't nothing going to come from it. Trump's still going to be the next president. What's not to mention they worried about Donald Trump for what? It's not like his kids or him are running around doing shady business deals all around the country. Listen, they so mad that January 6th didn't come out to nothing. It flopped. They got nothing on Trump with January 6th. So what's the best thing to do? January 6th 2.0. January 6th part 2. It's a scam. It's a setup, Patriots. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the major news from this weekend once again, which is the potential for former President Donald Trump to be arrested as allegedly, allegedly woke, overweight New York City <laughs> DA Alvin Bragg is about to press charges against Trump uh in relation to paying off adult film actress stormy daniels with his own personal funds now the argument against trump is that this is a federal uh campaign finance violation again even though he paid with his own personal funds they say that well he paid her because he didn't want her to talk uh to potentially derail or negatively damage his presidential campaign so therefore it is a campaign expense that should have been reported, right? But see, there's a couple problems with this that liberals don't seem to understand. First and foremost, uh, this is not a federal campaign expense, okay? And even if it was, uh, the state uh, has no jurisdiction over a federal campaign finance violation, okay? I don't know why Mr. Bragg believes that uh, he can actually prosecute Trump's for what would be a federal crime, but you know, hey, Again, a lot of politics at play here. This guy's trying to be a hero, right? He's trying to be a hero. He's trying to be the next New York City mayor or governor of New York or something, right? Maybe he's trying to run for president. Who knows, okay? Uh, but again, the easiest way to get clout on the left is to uh, do something like this against Trump. Uh, so that's what he's doing, right? Uh, also, uh, the Justice Department has already been down this route of trying to prosecute uh, politicians who run for president for paying off their mistresses, right? Like, for example, uh, former Democrat presidential candidate John Edwards uh, paid off $1 million to his mistress for her not to talk, right, when he was about to run for president, okay? And the Department of Justice tried to charge him, okay? They tried to go after him, but he was found uh, not guilty of one campaign finance violation, basically making an illegal donation. Uh, he's found not guilty on that. And then the rest, the jury couldn't really decide on, which, uh, resulted in a mistrial, right? So they've already went down this route. Uh, even as Trump is arrested, uh, th this is not going anywhere, right? It's not going to go anywhere. If anything, it's just going to make Trump stronger, but who knows if he'll actually get arrested because Trump is already walking back claims that, you know, he expects to be arrested. The Trump campaign now walking back a truth social post from the former president saying that he will be arrested on Tuesday. A Trump spokesperson is now saying there has been no notification of forthcoming charges beyond what they are calling, quote, illegal leaks to the media. The Manhattan DA has declined to comment. So, yeah, despite Trump walking back these claims and I think me myself not really believing that we're going to see Trump actually arrested until he gets arrested because Democrats have been calling for the arrest of Trump, saying Trump is going to be arrested. Criminal charges are going to be brought against him for literally years, okay? Before the man even got in office, they've been saying that and it hasn't happened. So when it actually does happen, I'll believe it. But until then, uh, Hollywood liberals and leftists like actor Billy Baldwin uh, is telling us exactly what they believe will happen if Trump supporters were to protest in the event that Trump was arrested essentially this guy is coming out here and saying that there will be violence he is threatening violence against trump supporters who protest who exercise their free speech rights to protest for the former president of the united states again the tolerant left the tolerant liberal uh peace loving left strikes again showing us that they're not really all about peace okay that this is how they feel about their fellow americans if they protest uh, which is that they want violence. As this guy said that any uprising over Trump arrest would be over in two Ashley Babbitt. So he's literally mocking the death of Ashley Babbitt. Okay, yeah. Again, this guy is heartless, soulless. Okay, again, this is the tolerant, loving left. So without further ado, let's read here. Billy Baldwin, co-star of Serbian crime drama, 
uh, diversively used the death of Ashley Babbitt in a mocking tweet about potential protests by supporters of Donald Trump. Trump said on uh, Truth Social that Manhattan District Attorney uh, Alvin Bragg is planning to have him arrested on Tuesday and urge his supporters to come out against it. Quote, protests take our nation back, wrote Trump on Saturday morning. He later tripled the call, writing protest, protest, protest in a follow up post. Now, again, people are interpreting this as a call to violence. Uh, I don't see anything there that is a call to violence or that can be interpreted as a call to violence, right? Again, but Trump doesn't get the benefit of the doubt, right? If he says protest, they automatically assume that it's supposed to be violent. But uh, most of the time when Trump says things, you don't have violent protests as a result. But when Democrats say things, uh, a lot of times we do get violent protests as a result, right? Uh, Baldwin, whose brother Alec Baldwin shot and killed a different woman, responded to Trump's true post with a tweet that used the fatal shooting of Babbitt during the riot in the Capitol building as a unit of measure. He began by writing that Trump is inciting violence and then said, quote, any uprising by the gravy seals will be over in two Ashley Babbitts or better known as a half a Scaramucci. Yeah. And then he said F around F around. So again, this sounds like a threat. Again, this sounds like a threat. This sounds like a threat. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like a threat of violence. I don't know how else you can interpret that. Again, this is from coming from the side that wants to ban guns, right? They want to ban guns, okay? They don't like weapons, okay? They're out of shape. They're fat, right? I'm just saying. Um, I don't think that a conflict between both ends of the political spectrum is going to end up well for the liberal left i just don't think it's gonna end up well for these people but hey this is what they want uh quote uh he incited a riot in Delhi insurrection some die and many have gone to prison as a result he's doing it again because he knows about to be indicted is donald trump really the hill you want to die on yeah so that question is actually a pretty interesting question in the sense that there is debate you know in conservative circles about whether or not uh people should protest uh for the president okay and whether or not the republican party should speak up for the president and there's one guy uh mr vivek ramaswamy who is actually running for president who has gotten really 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 loud on social media about Ron DeSantis and nikki haley and other potential presidential uh gop candidates uh basically being silent on this issue okay refusing to speak up in defense of trump in defense of what is obviously political persecution here. Uh, and I want to play his message because I think he's making some pretty good points that I want to talk about. I'm campaigning in South Carolina today. It's our first day here. Went to Dorchester County earlier, going to other areas in Charleston later today. I was going to talk about a number of cultural issues in this country, but I find it pretty distracting to just focus on what I was planning to talk about without actually talking head on about the serious news we heard this morning the risk that Donald Trump might be indicted while running for president of the United States for alleged violations that if it were any other situation would undoubtedly just be charged as a misdemeanor, if at all. This isn't to me about a person. I could care less about defending Donald Trump or any other individual out of some sort of personal affinity. Forget about that. This is about principle. It's about the country. It's about the idea that if you live in a self-governing democratic nation, a constitutional republic, it means that the people get to decide who actually wins the election, not some managerial class and certainly not a party in power that now uses quite literally, it would appear police power to stop their political opponents from running. That is wrong. That is not the America I know. That is not the America my parents came to. That is not the America that our founding fathers set into motion 250 years ago. That's the stuff of a banana republic. I think that's the stuff of the beginning of the end of the American experiment if we allow our Justice Department to be politicized and people to literally use police power to persecute and literally prosecute their political opponents. And so I hope, I really hope that the dialogue around this today, that some self-reflection from the Manhattan District Attorney results in them making the right decision to say that, you know what, you oppose Donald Trump, great. Speak out against him, vote against him, do everything you can to stop him from getting elected. That's fair game because that's how the electoral system works. But do not use prosecutorial power 
to disqualify your political opponents by locking them up and putting them in jail because once you cross that bridge, if you can do it to Trump, you can do it to anybody. And I think that that is a dangerous, slippery slope for us to go down as a country, especially if it involves particularly prosecuting someone for otherwise what an ordinary person would not have been prosecuted for criminally. It's wrong. And you know, it's not, it's not in my interest to say this. I'm just going to tell you this. I was advised to stay silent on this. Probably the same advice that every other GOP candidate got, which probably explains why the other GOP candidates from not Ron DeSantis to Nikki Haley are staying pin drop silent until they get permission from their political consultants and their donors to say something. I could care less about that. I would rather lose and be honest about what I say at every step of the way than to win and be a hollowed out husk of myself and as, a, as a, somebody who wants to be a standard bearer of the principles of this country. This is not about me. It's not about Donald Trump. It's not about anybody else. It's about making sure that this national experiment, which we call the American experiment, still continues for another 250 years rather than beginning a decline with the dangerous abuse of political power. This is not the way we run elections in this country. This is not the way we run a justice system in our country. Whether or not, whatever your politics are, we put principles first. And so the thing that disappoints me is I said that this morning as soon as I read the news. I didn't ask my political consultants or anything else. Put out a statement the fastest way I knew how that was on Twitter. And I expected my lead Republican fellow candidates in this race, prospective or actual, to follow suit. Because this isn't about, you know, we're running against the guy. That's fine. But this is about the principles. We should want to win not by eliminating the competition, but by actually earning the trust of the voters. That's what I'm trying to do, okay? What I heard instead was silence. And so the announcement I wanted to make tonight, to be crystal clear, is by tomorrow morning, I would like for even the beloved donor class favorites in this race, including Nikki Haley, including Ron DeSantis, to join me in calling on the New York Manhattan District Attorney to abandon this political persecution through prosecution. Yeah, so I think Mr. Ramaswamy has a great point, right? It's not about the person, it's about the principle. And I think that the silence from Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis um, is, again, interesting. And it's not that Ron DeSantis has actually declared that he's running for president yet. So I kind of, you know, understand the arguments that, oh, well, you know, he hasn't declared he's running for president, anything like that. So it's whatever, but he's definitely going to. I mean, like, the dude is literally doing everything that you should do when you're a governor running for president, okay? I mean, clearly he's going to run. He's going to announce at some point. Now, some people said that why should Ron DeSantis speak up for Trump when Trump has basically spent the last few months attacking Ron DeSantis in what appears to be a, a preemptive attack, okay? Um, however, um, I think that behind the scenes, uh, Trump and Ron DeSantis have probably been going back and forth with each other and this is why you're seeing it. Trump just decided to take it public. But again, it's because for Ron DeSantis, from a political savviness standpoint, um, it would honestly make him look like the better man to come out here and to say something about it. Right. Even though, again, Trump hasn't actually been charged yet or arrested yet. I think that if he came out here and basically, you know, showed support for the president and spoke out against his political persecution or the potential of political persecution, then I think that it would look really good on his part because it would seem like, look, I'm about the country. Like I'm big, I'm bigger than myself. I'm bigger than, you know, being upset about the fact that Trump has attacked me personally. I'm about principles. Uh, and I'm gonna stand up. His silence on this issue is actually making him look bad, especially among Trump's base, in the sense that they're expecting him to, you know, stand up and speak out about this. Um, so, you know, from a personal standpoint, I kind of get why he's not saying anything about it, at least up until now. He may come out and say something as they're making this video or tomorrow or whatever. He may just wait and see if he actually is arrested before saying anything. Um, but again, you know, I mean, you don't have to wait until he's actually arrested to speak up against the potential of it, especially considering how, again, it's been reported that it's, you know, it's a possibility. It's a strong possibility that this could happen. Enough pushback uh, preemptively could actually make the DA change his mind. Okay, he could say, you know what, this is way too much political pushback. This is going to uh, ignite uh, something that's too big to contain in this country. He may decide to stand down. Who knows? But again, the principle here is that if they can do it to Trump, then they can do it to anybody. You could be next, <laughs> right? The guy that, again, may run for president, most likely is going to run for president, could win. 
hey, they can go after you, right? If they can go after Trump with this, they can go after you, okay? Or, or any politician or anybody or any political opponent. Again, it's the same principle when it comes to when they banned Trump from social media initially, right? If they can do it to Trump, they can do it to anybody. And lo and behold, ever since they did it to Trump, they've had no issues weaponizing the censorship against conservatives. So this should be a slam dunk for the GOP to come out here against this. But as we all know, Mitch McConnell and the establishment class, uh, they're low-key happy, right? They want to see Trump get arrested, right? They, they want to see Trump thrown in, in jail or prison or something like that. So I'm not surprised for them not to be saying anything. But anybody that thinks they're going to win over Trump supporters and MAGA in the uh, GOP primary should definitely speak out about this. Because, again, it's about the principle. And, you know, again, this is not really a place that we want to go in our politics, because once you start to go here locking up political opponents uh, for, you know, petty <laughs> white collar crimes or whatever, or alleged petty white collar crimes, crimes that otherwise wouldn't be charged unless it was for political purposes, this is when you start to get into the real threat to democracy. And you would think that the Democrats, since they care so much about the so-called attack on democracy, um, they should be against what is happening to Trump because arresting Trump would be the biggest threat or attack on our democracy that I can think of in a long, long, long time. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.